What we've been working on in this project is trying to enable a new generation of semiconductors that we think will impact people's lives. Everybody wants better, smaller, cheaper, more efficient power supply uh, because it enables so many things that we do. If you look back in history and you look at sort of how semiconductors have evolved over time, the first generation of semiconductors was silicon really impacted our lives and enabled the information revolution. So now everybody has a computer on their desk thanks to that semiconductor generation. The second generation was gallium arsenide, which enabled cell phones. The third one is still kind of in process, and that is the wideband gap semiconductors that now have enabled solid state lighting or LED based lighting. We're trying to get the fourth one to come into place, and that's ultra wideband gap semiconductors. These are uniquely suited for handling high amounts of electrical power. And ultimately what we would like to do is replace all the transformers that are used to condition and, and convert power from one form to another with transistor-based power electronics that do it much more efficiently in a much smaller space and at lower cost. Ultra wide band gap is a term for a class of semiconductor materials. In our case, aluminum gallium nitride. The project really focuses on the fundamental science of these ultra wide band gap algand materials, uh, how to grow the materials, what are the physics of defects in the materials, how do the materials respond in a, in a harsh environment. Using these materials and our expertise in uh, growing crystals of these materials and fabricating them into devices, we were able to demonstrate some world record performances. We've developed GAN pin diodes that have record figure of merit. We've transitioned that to higher band gap algan alloys, generating more than kilovolt breakdowns in this ultra wide band gap material. And finally, we've demonstrated transistors that have extremely high band gaps as well, moving up to about 85% aluminum in the alloy. In these materials, like the bonds tend to be stronger than in a conventional semiconductor. And so that's kind of what gives them these desirable properties. This is the first instantiation of um, an ultra high band gap transistor. And the band gap is actually higher than what you find in diamond. It's the highest band gap material out of which a working transistor's ever been built, um, to our knowledge. We've been working on these materials for at least 15 years for other applications such as UV optoelectronics. We've been able to directly translate this to our power electronics, and this has really positioned us very well for making breakthroughs in power devices. Having devices that can switch high uh, voltages and high currents quickly, which is another thing that can happen here, enables one to shrink other components of power systems, uh, passive components like capacitors and inductors, because of the higher switching speeds. And that um, shrinks the entire power supply. Basically, we're trying to process power more efficiently and uh, also more compactly. So an example might be an electric vehicle. They need to be able to handle power to switch power from the batteries to do the charging when you plug it in at night. And compact power electronics could fit in there, uh, increase the efficiency, and lower the weight of the vehicle. We also have missions in fielding satellite systems. They are very swap sensitive, meaning they have to be lightweight, they have to be uh, efficient, they have to be able to withstand uh, radiation environments in space. Turns out the band gap is a reflection of the strength of the atomic bonds between the atoms and the material. If that bond is really strong, then it's radiation resistant. A lot of times, you know, scientists tell you a lot of things are possible, but until you demonstrate it, um, you don't get a lot of traction. And I think we've actually shown what is possible. Ultra wide band gap is sort of the next next step in the evolution. We certainly have many technical risks to realize the full potential of these devices, but if we succeed we could really revolutionize power electronics and that's just really exciting.